At first, charging $1,600 for a monitor may seem unreasonable, but when you factor in that we're talking about a display built by Apple, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Okay, so how does it make sense? I mean, right now this is just a refreshed LG panel with an Apple logo, right? Well, no. Despite sentiment from other past thoughts about this display, this display is so much more than that. In addition to following LG's path, Apple has picked a crisp color accurate with some tuning, I'm sure, IPS panel. Still, Apple claims over 1 billion colors can be pushed on this display, and this display does manage to get Apple circle pattern. Granted, they're much smaller than the Pro XDRs, and I believe the holes on the bottom contain the speaker array. Even still, this thing is heavy, and it does have Apple's typical beautiful brushed matte-like appearance, but still there's more because at the top middle of the screen, you can see a small punch out where there's a webcam located along with the microphone. Now, even still, Apple has hidden away what's essentially an iPad 9 gen within this monitor and i'll say that's for good reason okay but first in order to celebrate hitting 150 subscribers i'm actually going to be giving away a 50 dollars best buy gift card uh so in order to redeem the gift card here somewhere on the screen some somewhere here there's going to be a letter and this letter is the first letter that you need in order to access this page here somewhere on the screen as well now uh you put this letter and then all the other letters that are going to be somewhere throughout this video and then uh you get fifty dollars and you can use it at best buy to get whatever you want i don't think you can get other gift cards unfortunately but you can buy stuff so there you guys go and uh thank you so much for the continued support and whoever gets it leave a comment and tell me that you got it because i want to know who gets it i want i want to be able to tell you congratulations and uh thank you very much for 150 subs but now this display is unsurprisingly well built. For decades, Apple has tried to make the best looking products possible and I think they accomplished it here. This is a much more toned back and almost Mac style display. There's really only one big indicator of who made this display and that's a very subtle and elegantly placed Apple logo at the very back of the monitor. The bezels are thin, however, I think they could be thinner with most monitors choosing to completely almost eliminate them. Now, I do think that this thicker bezel has something to do with the monitors camera, microphone, and speaker setup. However, it's up for debate. Okay, for the actual overview. For $1,600, you get four total ports. That's it. There's no power button, volume up or down rockers. You get four ports. Of those four ports, one is your upstream, supporting 96 watt host charging and Thunderbolt 3 connections. Essentially, you can charge your MacBook and a couple other devices while you're connected. The other three ports, are USB downstream ports that support up to 10 gigabytes a second. You can only connect a display signal to the Thunderbolt port and this brings us to an interesting point because things connected to this display can be interesting. You have a 635 watt speaker array with a 12 megapixel camera and finally a very decent microphone. It almost sounds like a MacBook Pro mics. I assume they're the same or very similar design. The display that sits on the display is a 600 nit 5120 by 2880 pixel display. At 27 inches, this leaves us 217 pixels per inch for our viewing pleasure, which actually translates into a fairly decent image. With the display being this size, the image shows literally no pixels, and while well, getting as close to you can to the display only reveals the sharpness issues that are in your OS. In addition to the hardware benefits, you actually get some more features in Mac OS. You're able to use both True Tone and Center Stage, which I must say True Tone is awesome. Being able to show a softer image during night it is great on the eyes, and that's always an absolute benefit. Now, when I said this thing was well built, I wasn't kidding. Not only is the display itself made from an actual glass panel, but the entire display casing is made from aluminum, definitely setting this monitor apart from anything else on the market. Now, that's not saying that this monitor was designed perfectly. The monitor never wobbles or shakes, and whenever I'm typing, my desk is moving slightly. The tilt is pretty good considering it's all you can do, it's not pretty bad. It seems like they put a lot of work into it and the tilt adjusting is smooth and feels very nice. You can easily move it with one finger despite me struggling to push it a little bit. The viewing angles on this display are amazing, with everything looking bright and looking full of color no matter what angle you're looking from. I can't stress how well this display is at full brightness. It's like really, really bright and the color richness leaves well really nothing to be desired. OLED is something to compare to, but this seems better. The speakers are unsurprisingly loud, like MacBooks and iMacs. They're full of bass and they sound very rich. 
The highs on all of the sounds sound very nice and crisp, and voices come out together very nice. The microphone, while definitely not studio grade, it does sound very nice, and like I said, a lot like my MacBook. Sounding a lot like my Mac is actually a kind of a good thing because the continuity. Center stage, you see? Pretty amazing. I mean, it's a monitor sitting on your desk and you don't have to do anything. I mean, it follows me here, it follows me here, it follows me like this. It's pretty great. Now, with center stage turned on, you can do a lot of things, but in order to record a video, I, I couldn't really find a player on the App Store that supports it, so you want to open up your QuickTime player, uh, which will allow you to record with center stage. And uh, like I said, it follows me around my room. And I mean, the panning is smooth. It's like someone's moving it around for you. Now, unfortunately, despite how great center stage is, the webcam is pretty poo. As you can see here, despite the light and earlier a lot more light, it doesn't really get much better than this. It's pretty much always a grainy image with a lot of noise, but I mean, it's 12 megapixels translates into a 720p image, so you can't really get anything out of it. So you have a 27-inch 5K liquid retina display with camera, speaker, microphone set up, and a beautifully designed stand. The display is nice. Words show up very crisp and have a nice sharp look to them. The color reproduction is great, and it looks very similar to the M1 MacBook Pro's display. Both of them do not share the same panel, however. This display has a 5K 27-inch 600-nit peak brightness display, in addition to having a P3 color gamut. You will also get a default color profile in Mac OS. You can always set your own color profile, but that's the thing. You can only set these color profiles in Mac OS. Connect this display to a Windows machine and well, it gets tricky. Firstly, you need a Thunderbolt port. Let me say again, you need a Thunderbolt port. In addition, you more than likely want this Thunderbolt port coming from your GPU rather than your actual motherboard because the Past. Now here you can use a virtual link port from 2000 series cards, but I'm not sure on that because I didn't have one to test. If anyone in the comments has any experience and has tried it already, tell us how it works. Now you can use this wire, but see that's the thing. The Apple Studio display will take Thunderbolt 3 and DisplayPort 1.4. However, DisplayPort 1.4 has to be passed through through Thunderbolt. It can only come through through Thunderbolt. Through, through Thunderbolt? It can only come through through Thunderbolt. So being passed through through Thunderbolt can only come from a very, very high bandwidth cable because of how heavy the Thunderbolt signal is. So you need to find one with a, a thick enough, heavy enough signal. However, you want to make sure that you find a true Thunderbolt cable uh, and a I guess Thunderbolt 3 cable or a USB 4 cable along with enough bandwidth to push the display. Now this will limit you as you won't be able to use the speakers, cameras, or microphone, but you may not miss this if you're just hopping on Windows and then going over to your Mac machine. Despite this monitor being only 60 hertz, it still performs very well. The screen is smooth and it gets bright enough in direct sunlight that you don't even really notice it. This is the regular display and not the nano textured one for better glare performance, but that's an additional $300 on top of a $1,600 price tag. If you want the height adjustable one, there's another $400. Luckily, there is a vase amount option that's for the same price as the regular tilt display, but it's not interchangeable, so basically what you pick is what you get. There's posts and articles online that say taking your display to the Apple store and asking them to change it, they'll do it for the cost of the original part plus labor. The tilt display is very sturdy and hardly ever shakes, and the slight tilt that you get with this mount is fairly decent, going all the way upwards and a fair large more down than you would imagine, but it's definitely noticeable. The stand itself isn't removable, but it's still pretty. In fact, it's nicer than most stands, and I think it looks better than just sitting on the vase amount. But if you want that, then of course you can get it for the same price. However, if you want to push it up and down, and you want it from Apple, that's going to cost you another $400. While it's no secret, Apple wants you to use their Mac Studio to push this monitor, which isn't a terrible recommendation. I don't think everyone is interested in spending $2,000 for a base price Mac Studio. So let's say you want to connect your Windows PC to this display. Well, if you have a Thunderbolt cord and port, simply plug in and you should be fine. Your wire may be too short and you can purchase one from Apple for $129.99. 
Now it is a 1.8 meter cord, but that price does seem a little hefty. You can, of course, buy other ones, but you may want to watch the bandwidth on the wires. Also, you should check to make sure that you get a true Thunderbolt cord. Checking to make sure that there's a lightning bolt on the end of the cord will ensure that it is USB 4 or Thunderbolt Type 3. If you don't have a Thunderbolt card and buying one isn't an option, or it wouldn't work for your system because of the architecture that Thunderbolt because of the architecture that Thunderbolt uses, some motherboards and CPUs won't be compatible. If you're unsure, simply check for your motherboard's compatibility on the website in the user manual, meaning you can run a computer with a DisplayPort connection just fine as long as you find a strong enough wire. Next, the wire you choose has to be very carefully picked. Many people have mentioned this wire, saying it works flawlessly with their machines. Now, when ordering this wire, I seen this pretty braided wire for just a few more dollars and I figured, why not? Now, I'm having issues <laughs> with the monitor flickering and artifactoring. Now, uh, this is completely random and I kind of might have figured out a fix. I'm not sure if it's the wire, but at this point I've went through seven different wires and I'm not interested in going through another one. Now, it could be the wire, but I just want to say, this wire does say that it has speeds of 32.4 gigabytes a second, which the other wire that's being recommended also says. So, I would say aim for your wire bandwidth to be somewhere around there. Running this monitor with the Windows machine may prove pretty difficult at some times. I also had a problem where the monitor wouldn't power on after restarting my monitor, and in fact, this is still happening. Connecting the display to my other TV display, uh, seems to kind of help because then I can extend it and change it over and I'll see if I can get a screen recording of that to play during this, but it's pretty tedious just to restart my computer. And this is every single time. Another issue you may face in Windows is the inability to change your settings or update the display. That is something that you may want to kind of take note. You have to update this display. In fact, it latest update is a Windows compatibility update, so you're going to want to update this display, so you're going to want to have a Mac machine. And also remember, using the display wire or the display port only allows you, now also remember, using the display port all, only allows you to use the display itself, so why wouldn't you get a wire? If you don't want to connect a Windows machine to your system and you're trying to decide if this is the best monitor you could pair with your Mac machine and even some iPads, I would recommend looking at your use case. For a monitor like this, I feel like your use needs to be as broad as possible. That's really why I wish that Apple did more to support at Windows and machines. See, if you only edit media on your MacBook and you simply want a more color accurate display, there's other displays on the market. If you watch movies and edit frequently and maybe FaceTime with your Mac and maybe you don't have a MacBook and you're currently using a 2K Dell display with 177 pixels per inch, this display may be useful for you. I don't think this monitor is best at doing everything and the webcam is just barely passable following previous Mac models. $400 for a height moving stand seems outrageous, but then you remember the Pro XDR is a non-optional 1000 and it's very confusing. All the things that it does great, it's like there's another thing making you look for the next thing that they sacrificed. Okay, but this display was made for Mac and iPad to a smaller extent, but Mac, yes. I would agree plugging this display into my MacBook Pro worked amazingly, turning the display right on, and I must say the Mac integration is great. Not only can you use this as a secondary monitor, but you can also use it as a primary monitor simply by closing your Mac. Of course, you're going to want to have a keyboard and mouse connected, which you could pass through through the monitor. The two allow each other to function perfectly, with the Windows machine being a distant yet compatible second cousin. Yes, if you have a Windows machine it will work, but, well, using it solely for a Windows machine, no. You're going to want to have a MacBook. In order to update and really get the most out of this monitor, remember, this thing has an entire computer inside of it. Of course you can't use the hardware, but it's still there, powering advanced features like center stage and hopefully Apple adds a couple more. With over 64 gigabytes of onboard storage, I don't imagine you not being able to update without being able to actually access the system memory. I don't think this monitor would make a great exclusive monitor for a Windows user. If you have a Mac system that you can use to update this monitor and also use primarily with this monitor, then it's great. There you go. That's what this is. A monitor that's great for your Mac and can be there for your PC. Don't think that this is your only choice, and unfortunately spending more doesn't mean that you actually get better. 
the this displays out of the box color calibration mac compatibility outright update support and suddenly bright 600 nit 5k display webcam six speaker microphone array make it just barely worth it sadly i feel like apple could have done more for the windows compatibility and support not only can you not use a menu speakers webcam and microphone but you can't turn on and off the display which is fine but you can't even remove the power cable for $1,600 with the Mac machine, you get a great display, throw in a Windows machine, $20 wire from Amazon, and you get a great display. I feel like if Apple did more to work with Windows, that might make this display worth $1,600. Imagine an all-in-one display that you can bring with you to lands or on a road trip. This monitor has poised to make your gaming setup finally as close to an all-in-one as you can get, but Apple's lack of support outright obliterates this. I mean, if you were able to unplug the monitor, you could keep it wired and managed up and then leave and bring it back home and then same thing with your PC. I mean, it doesn't really make sense as of to why they chose to make these sort of decisions. However, it is a great monitor. It looks great and if you think that it's worth it, you should buy it because it's worth it. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for 150 subs. Here's the last letter, by the way. And uh, I mean, we just hit 100, I, I think like a month ago, two months ago. And now we're at 150. So I'm, I mean, wow. <laughs> thank you guys very much. And if you enjoyed, leave a like. If you hated it, leave a dislike. If you really, really liked it, subscribe. Let's get that number even higher let's see how far we can go so thank you guys very much for watching thank you guys so much for all the support and leave a comment on how you felt and if you had an answer to any of my questions please answer them so we can kind of keep the the answers flowing so we can figure out more about this monitor because there's a lot about it that there's like no explanation like you can't figure this stuff out and articles are just stupid ads that talk about nothing so please help let's see what we can do that, that's why I'm publishing this, so we can build a community around this and maybe eventually get a very nice, all-in-one, beautiful display like this worth it. <laughs> so thank you guys.